Hey everybody, Richard Blissbrook here with yet another global influencer podcast interview. And today I've got one of my favorite people in the world, an incredible inspiration to me in my life and my career, Mr. Cody Bateman, the author of Promptings and the owner of Send Out Cards. Say hey, Cody. Hey everybody, how you doing? <laughs> They're doing good now that they're going to listen to you because you're going to teach them about how to listen to their heartbeat, listen to their intuition, listen to their promptings. And we're going to talk about relationship marketing. How about that? Sounds great. I'm looking forward to it. By the way, it's an honor to be on this. I love this show. And it's I'm super excited to be interviewed by you. You're you're one of my great mentors in life. So this is gonna be fun. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Cody. I appreciate that. So uh here's how I want to start off. First, I want to let give people a sense of, of who you are, Cody. You are the founder of Send Out Cards, which is one of the most revolutionary relationship tools that anybody in any kind of sales business can have, where you can go right online and type a message to somebody that gets printed out in your handwriting on an actual, physical, real, full color, glossy greeting card, put in the mail first class postage and mailed to somebody. And you have over a million people that have taken advantage of that concept and sent but something like 160 million cards, 12 million gifts to 100 countries around the world. How long has Send Out Cards been around? Well, it's interesting. I was just interviewing a bunch of our reps today, and uh, 17 years. We've been talking about our 17-year journey uh, numerous times today with people. So, so you got an anniversary. That's that's cool. Um, and I, I guess I have to fully disclose that I'm a send out cards customer. <laughs> I don't know if that changes anything for anybody, but, uh, I send those things out to my customers because how cool is that? Right. I don't have to go to the post office. Uh, I don't even do it. I just delegate. I have somebody else type all the messages and send them out to my customers and they get a one-off card personalized to them in the mail. And I think nothing's more important, Cody, as I'm sure you will agree in this day of high tech, which just keeps quantum leaps of high tech happening every year. Somehow we have to hang on for dear life to high touch. And you have certainly done that uh, with send out cards. But where I want to start this interview, Cody, is, um, I want to start at the beginning, like how did send out cards get created and where did promptings your book come from? I have heard you tell this story a few times to thousands and thousands of people in, in audiences to standing ovations. I'm going to ask you to tell it here again. Where did this all begin and how did it begin for you? So in 1989, I graduated from college and received a job offer to go to work for the big ad agency in New York City. I was from Utah, a little town in Utah, and here I am offered this job to go to the big city to work for an ad agency. I accepted the offer, and uh, I was newly married at the time, little baby girl, 18 months old. We gathered all of our belongings together, put it in a U-Haul truck, went over to my parents' house to say bye to our family, and then we're going to move all the way across the country. And when we went to leave that day, uh, I remember going out and getting in the car. The U-Haul truck was being uh, driven behind us, and, and I, went, I went and got in the car, and I looked over in the lot adjacent to my parents' home, my older brother, Chris was over there moving these vehicles around in, in, in this lot. And at that moment, I had what I call a prompting, an intuitive thought that I needed to slow down, stop what I was doing, 
go over to my brother, give him a hug, tell him I love him and say goodbye. Now, I've got to be honest with you. At that time, we weren't a huggy family. We didn't, we didn't really hug very much. So the thought was kind of weird. It was kind of a, it was kind of a weird thought. And, uh, and we were in a hurry, and there were other people waiting for us. You could say life got in the way, so I ignored this prompting. I remember getting in the car, and we drove off. I honked and waved at my brother, and I remember him waving back at me. I'll never forget the look on his face. We drove away. And we drove all the way across the country, moved into our new place in New York, um, started our new life. Things were going great for a couple of months until one night at about two o'clock in the morning, I get a phone call and my mother's on the other end of the line. And she tearfully let me know that my brother Chris had just been killed in an accident. He was electrocuted on, on the job. And I got this news and Richard, I was just, I was devastated. I was absolutely devastated. And the only thing I could think of is that I ignored this prompting. Well, let me tell you something. I got the prompting now. I totally got why I got this thought that I needed to go give him a hug. Tell me this. I didn't, I had no idea that would be the last chance I'd have to do that. But that's why the prompting came, but I ignored it. And so that night that, that was a, that was the monumental shift in my entire life because that night I made a promise to my brother, Chris, who had now passed away. I made a promise to him. I said, listen, I'm sorry, brother. And I promise you that when I have a prompting to reach out in kindness to another human being, I'm going to act. And I'm going to do all I can to help as many people as I can do the same. That was in 1989. That's where the dream started to build something like we have in Send Out Cards today. It's a way to help you act on your promptings and reach out to others. Yeah. So you want to talk a little bit about um, the philosophy behind prompting. So if we're sitting in a promptings workshop, which I've had the opportunity to do on several occasions, Walk us through what what you would be walking us through, guiding us to understand how those promptings come, where they come from, how to act on them, why to act on them, and a little bit deeper cut into, you know, your version of helping us understand who are we and what's important to us and what are we going to do with our lives. Well, what do you do in those promptings workshops? Well, we always start out, and again, keep in mind, you know, going back just a little bit, when this experience happened, literally from that day forward, I went on this 35 plus year journey to figure out what this promptings thing meant. I mean, uh, it was significant. What, what is a prompting? You know, what should you do with it? And over that journey, you know, we've learned a lot and I've taught hundreds of courses over the years on promptings and how to act on them and whatnot. And uh, what I've learned is there's really two kinds of promptings. And this is the first thing that we go over. This is the beginning of our day in our workshop is we, we I, first I tell the story that you just heard. And then I go into the philosophy of promptings and that there's two kinds of promptings. There's the inner prompting, which is your inner voice that really tells you who you are as a person. And then there's the outer prompting, which tells you what to do with who you are. It's that prompting to reach out in kindness to others. You know, I, I really should thank that person. That's an outer prompting. You know, I really need to congratulate that person for a great, God, they did an incredible job. They, I really need to congratulate. That's a prompting. And you always, always, always should act on those. And so those are the two kinds of promptings. And we, we actually do a lot of visual stuff. We have this infinity sign that we do on the one side's the inner prompting outside's the outer prompting. And then you just, I have people actually, um, uh, trace, on this infinity sign around inner prompting on the left, outer prompting on the right. And I have them just do this. What that is, is if you begin to act on your promptings, you will create a flow of positive energy in your life. And typically with, with, you know, I have a mechanism in send out cards where you can use the mechanism to act on an outer prompting. You know, it's like, I, I need to thank somebody. Okay, well, let's go on and let's send them a card. 
Well, that's a specific action to acting on the outer prompting. And here's what happens. The second you act on an outer prompting to reach out to somebody, it could be a card, a phone call, whatever, any way that you reach out to somebody, uh, going driving over to see somebody, um, to act on that outer prompting, every single time you do that, it initiates the inner voice. It initiates it because what you're doing is you're giving a piece of yourself. Every time you act on an outer prompting, you're giving a piece of yourself to another human being. And when you do that, it ignites that inner voice. Now, a lot of our inner voices are very soft today. We live in a negative, ugly, cynical world. Let's face it. We have a whole bunch of people out there telling us what we can't do. We have a whole bunch of people out there telling us all this nonsense about who we ought to be. But yet we have our own voice inside that, that tells us who we really are. And the challenge is, is that most of the time we're, that, that voice is so squashed down in there, we can't hear it. So by acting on outer promptings, we ignite that inner voice and it becomes a little bit louder and a little bit louder over time. And there's not a better feeling in the world, Richard, to get this infinite flow going. Because when you act on those promptings and that inner voice ignites, you're able to tap into who you really are as a person. And let me tell you, every single one of you listening right now, um, let, let me tell you, and I know this sounds cliche or whatever, but listen, you got to hear me. <laughs> you are extremely unique. Every person listening here is so extremely unique to humanity. It's not even funny. There's things in this world only you can do. There's people at certain times in life only you can reach. And that's the way it's designed. That's just the way it is. And so you, you, you have a responsibility to be the real you and to give that away to other people. So that's kind of how we get started. We have exercises and stuff around that. I heard Les Brown say something um, in an interview I did of him where he said, you know, there's certain people in the world that can only hear your voice. They can, some people can hear my voice. Some people can hear your voice, Cody. Some people can hear Les Brown's voice. But there's some people that can only hear another person's voice. And it's our responsibility to share our voice because there's only some people that are going to be able to hear it. And they're not going to be able to hear a Les Brown's voice or your voice or my voice but they might be able to hear a friend's voice or a family member's voice or a coworker's voice. And so you don't want to miss those opportunities to contribute to people. And, you know, the interesting thing about acting on promptings is it's like love, right? It's a ever self-generating uh, commodity. The more of it you give away, the more of it you generate. So it's not a depletion thing, right? It's like the more promptings you act on, the more capacity you have to act on your promptings, which it's like a self-generating power source. It makes you and I more powerful the more of it we do. So we have more to give, and then we also have more power just to do what we want to do with our lives. It's a it's a beautiful calling you've been on now for 30 plus years. What a mission. So okay. speak a little bit, Cody, about since I've watched you for a long time. You've been through some tough times. Uh, the world isn't always ready for what you're offering. They're not always listening to your voice. And yet, one of the things I've noticed about you is you don't waver one, one tiny minute, one inch. You don't waver at all. You are laser-focused, dedicated, consistent, reliable, responsible to your mission and to your vision. And you probably don't think about that a lot. But could you speak to what's that like for you to not always have things go your way, but not have that 
sway you from your way? That's a great question. It really is. I think consistency is such a big thing in the world today to, to any kind of productivity or success. I mean, consistency, I think, is the biggest word uh, to help any of us do anything. And uh, there's a lot of consistency in my life. I mean, I tell that story over and over again. We consistently teach the workshops and things. We write the books. We do conference calls every week. There's, I, I put myself in a place where I have to be consistent with my story. I have to be consistent at sharing it and telling it. And I think uh, uh, putting yourself in a place of consistency is important. It's habitual. It's a, it's a habit for me. Now, I will tell you, there's a, there's a flip side of that. <laughs> Complete transparency. I'm not... I'm just a numbskull head just like the rest of us. I mean, there are days when I have bad days. I mean, I have bad days. There are days when I do want to give up. There's days when I'm really frustrated. There's days when life gets in the way and there's family things and there's issues. Listen, there's issues that all of us deal with that nobody knows we're dealing with. All of us are going through that. So there are those days, but I'll tell you what, consistency is what carries you through. There are days when I don't feel like telling the story one more time. I just, I'm beat up, I'm worn down, I'm ticked off, I'm whatever. But guess what? I have an appointment the next morning with 50 people on a call and I have a responsibility to tell the story yet again. So I have to put on my big boy pants and get on the call and get my mind right and do it. And guess what? By the end of the call, I'm back mindset where I need to be. And so I think that's really the key is find a way to create consistency to whatever your message is. Yeah. Um, so let's talk about relationship marketing a little bit. That's, uh, that's popular today. Hasn't always been popular, but it's popular today. But you've been doing it for 35 years. Talk to us about, you know, if you got something to sell, if you if you got somebody to recruit, if you're looking to bring somebody along your journey, add them to your vision, sell them your product, recruit them onto your team. What is the whole relationship marketing about? What is that, and how do you teach it and apply it in your business? Well, we have courses on on that as well. I've got a book, Power of Human Connection, about relationship marketing. And the, the first thing we always talk about is relationship marketing is about the first word, not the second. It really is. The key is the first word. It's about relationship. And most people have it backwards. Most people think and they resonate to this concept of relationship marketing. They're they're drawn in by the second word. They're drawn in by, oh, a new way to market, marketing. Ooh, relationship marketing. That sounds cool. How can I go market my products the relationship way? (laughs) <laughs> and, and, you know what I mean? So, yeah. So you immediately jump in thinking, you know, okay, cool. I got a way that I can gain from this, and not even thinking about a way that you can give to this. So, relationship marketing is about the first word, it's not about the second. It's all about it. it I used to say it's it's. In fact, I have a little thing in there where I say it's 80% about relationship and 20% about marketing. And, and there's some things that you do in your daily routine that might be 80% mar- uh, re- uh, relationship related, 20% marketing. But as a philosophy in general, it's all about relationship. It's all about relationship. I want to give you an example. I was actually interviewed on another podcast a little while ago. We were talking about the fact that, you know, when, when we do something in life, we, we have a way that we generate income, okay? We all have different, it, we, let's call it the profession we're in. Most of you listening are in network marketing as a profession. It's a way for you to make a living. And let's face it, uh, we, have, we all have to go out and make a living. We don't eat. We don't have a roof over our head. It's a necessity. 
it's on the lowest level of Maslow's hierarchy of needs. You got to have shelter and you got to have food in your stomach and it takes money to do that. So a primary thing that all of us do is go out and make a living. So the, here's, here's the point of this. What you, what you do in your profession, your profession is your opportunity to create relationships with people. Most people think, well, no, my profession is a way to make a living to make money. No, it's not. Get that out of your boom. Set that out. No, it's not. The prof- your profession is your primary way to meet people. It's your primary way to create relationships with humanity. It's the core of what everybody does. We all have to make a living doing something. And whatever way we make a living is a place where we get to serve other people. If you don't serve other people, you don't make money. So it, it, the biggest blessing in the whole world is our profession. Because it gives us that, that is the, that's the stage for you to create relationship with people. And if you focus on it that way, everything's about creating relationships. And then the marketing side of it kind of takes care of itself. I'm just there to serve you. I'm just there to help you the best way that I can. I'm here to assess your needs and help you out however I can. I'm not here to sell you stuff. I'm here to serve you. And if you take on that approach where professions about relationship, not about making money, then it that, that that's the core. That's like the, like the inside there, and then you can go out. There. Now, the first time I heard anything like this, it wasn't called relationship marketing, but it was on a 30-minute audio tape. 30 years ago called A New Way of Selling by Larry Wilson. And he must have been pretty early in his career, but today Wilson Training Systems is one of the biggest corporate sales training companies in the world. And he was talking about this concept where, you know, in traditional sales, if you get an appointment with the decision maker, the prospect, whomever, In traditional sales, what the salesperson would do on the first appointment is start selling, right? So, you know, hey, I've got, I think the example he used was, you know, a copying machine salesperson. So he would get in on the first appointment and he'd start telling the buyer about how great their copying machines were. And so Larry Wilson was introducing what he called a new way of selling. And and it's just so caught my attention because... I don't think I I was doing that. I mean, I I think the first time I got in front of a prospect, I was telling them why they needed to buy what I was selling and why they needed to join my team. And, And so Larry's whole concept was, no, how about try this? How about on the very first appointment, you never say anything about your product. You never talk about features and benefits. You never sell your product at all. You're purely, now this is on a business to business, which is what he teaches, you know, B2B sales. You're purely there to learn, to learn in the, if you're selling copiers. So if I was selling you copiers, uh, Cody, it would be, okay, what kind of copiers do you have now? How many copiers do you have? And what kind of problems do you have? What kind of costs do you have? What do you, what's your vision for copying? You know, what, what do you want to do with copiers? And all I do in the first appointment is ask questions. And I let you know, you know, hey, Cody, I'm here. I'm just, I want to learn all about your copying problems and your copying opportunities. And I'll come back if you allow me to on a second appointment after I've digested your copying needs. And I'll present a proposal to you that's custom to your needs. And, of course, I wasn't in the B2B business, but how I heard all of that was, I guess, what people would call relationship marketing today, which was, hey, how about before we start telling people what they should do, buy my product, join my team, how about if we learn who they are and what they want? Right? And how about if we do that? 
how, how about if we build a relationship and, you know, human beings kind of have this, as you know, they have this addiction, right? Like if you and I come together somewhere in the world, I kind of have this addiction of, you know, Cody, I want you to know who I am. So listen to me, listen to my stories, my opinions, right? And because you're human, you want me to know who you are. And so what you've done so brilliantly, Cody, is teach people to set kind of that addiction aside for a moment. Hey, listen to me. Hey, learn who I am. Set your own needs aside and make the other person's needs, needs to be known, needs to be heard, needs to matter. Make that the priority, right? So when two people come together, for example, when somebody comes together with somebody that you've taught through promptings or send out cards, that person is going to do a lot more asking and listening than they are telling. Yeah, no question about it. In fact, as you're as you're as you're mentioning all that, it, I, I just uh, it reminds me of an experience I'm going through right now. Um, how there's such a human need for people to feel heard, to feel listened to. Um, right now, I'm involved with a project. Um, we're launching a bunch of new things with, with our companies and, uh, we have a, a la- what we call a launch team. There's about 70 affiliates that are associated with our companies that are on this launch team and they've earned a way to be on there. And we typically do group discussions. So when there's something new that comes up, we have, a, we have a zoom and all 70 are on there and I go on and talk about whatever it is to talk about. Now I have a relationship with all these 70 people and they need new information. We have a call. There's all 70 on there. I talk to them all. Well, we're doing something really big right now that's coming out in the, in the near future. And uh, we want help from this launch team. And I made a decision that I, to announce what it is we're doing, and it's huge. It's a big, big announcement. And to, to announce what we're doing, I wasn't going to do a call with all 70. I was going to call each. I was going to do a Zoom meeting with each one individually. Wow. 70 people individually. By the way, I've done it all day today before this podcast. <laughs> 15 minutes, intervals. Boom, 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 boom. Richard, I got to tell you, and I should know better. I teach this stuff. I should know better. I was blown away at the deep level of appreciation that was felt by each of those individuals that I would take the time to do that one-on-one. Same story, same message, same thing, 70 times. But it gave me an opportunity to be one-on-one with that person. And I was shocked. at I mean, they were tearfully grateful I took the time to do that, and I was initially shocked about that. But I started thinking, well, dude, that's what you teach. You teach this stuff, you know. I mean, come on. So, it, it, I'm telling you, the, the, it's just that basic human need, just to feel like you're important enough to be heard, and that's really what it all is. Yeah, and to be seen, you know. So, heard, yes. Like if I have something to say, I I really want someone to listen. But all those 70 people out there, you know, when they're silent, they kind of have this this little urge inside of them that you would see them. Yeah. And that they matter. Yeah. And, boy, if you could just kind of boil the human experience all the way down to that, that what people are looking for is to be seen, to be heard, and to matter. Now you have something to market. Yeah. Well, like you just said at the beginning, Cody, put the relationship first, see people, hear people, let them feel like they matter and they're going to follow you everywhere. 
<laughs> right? <laughs> They're going to buy everything you're selling. I think, was it uh, Maya Angelou said, Mary Kay Ash is famous for repeating it, but I think Maya Angelou said, uh, people will never remember uh, what you said, but they'll always remember how you made them feel. Yeah. And that's all relationship marketing. So uh, without, uh, without telling any surprises, which I don't want you to do on this podcast, but of course, by the time people see this, Maybe it'll already be announced. And I, I, it just doesn't have to, this isn't a business question. This is really a Cody Bateman question. So you've been doing this a long time, Cody, and you've had a huge impact, impacted millions and millions and millions of lives. What's next for Cody Bateman? What's the quantum leap? What's Cody Bateman doing in the next four or five years that's going to take his message to billions? Wow, that's yeah, that's a, that's a big question, and there there is a big plan in place, and it's in the works to 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 deliver that. But to be general about it, you know, it, um, I just I, I I just I see potential in people. I think God puts gifts in all of us, and. For a long time, I, I just I, I'm I'm capable of seeing the potential that's in people, and I just so desperately want to help people reach their potential and at a deeper level. I, I think we've scratched the surface. I think we've done some great things. We got some good products and services that help people act on their promptings and get that inner voice ignited. And I think that all helps. But I'm at a stage now where I really want to give as much as I possibly can one-on-one, -on -one, individually with people to really help them reach the true potential that they have. Listen, we're, we're, we're in a world that is in desperate need for giving people. And I, I just want to be able to do as much as I can to help people find out the true version of who they are and show them how they can give themselves away to people in the world. And if we if we get more and more people to do that, we can change this world back to a giving world again. Yeah. A, lot, a lot of what's going on in the world today, Richard, you know, you see the mayhem and the craziness that's going on out there. It's because people forgot how to give. People, people want to get before they give. And I really think that's the core of the problem. It, 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 it attributes to every issue that's going on right now. And if we could just get people back to the idea, look, your job is to find out who you are and get, just give yourself away. My mom taught me that when I was a kid, just find out who you are, give yourself away. And if I can help people do that at a deeper level, you know, I'm, I'm past all the, I mean, you know, we all want to make money. We all want to, uh, reach big financial goals and and whatnot, but I'm 56 years old now. I'm kind of past all that. The ego stuff's gone for me now. I don't need to prove nothing to anybody. I just, I just, I just want to help, man. I just want to help. I, I, that's really, that's really it. I'm, I'm just, I'm just a player out there that wants to help, you know. And like you said, Les Brown, some people are never going to hear my, my voice. They're going to hear yours instead. But the ones that are going to hear my voice, and I've got to be there to, to, to be the voice. And uh, anyway, we're all in this together. So, Yeah, and our world does need big time to shift, right? So, ladies and gentlemen, if you had a prompting in the last 40 minutes, that's a question for you. You had a prompting about maybe it's time for you to have a shift more towards giving, more towards the relationship versus marketing. You had a prompting that you want to be part of the solution to the future of this world instead of part of the polarizing problem. Maybe you want to align yourself with Cody Bateman. Maybe that's the, the internal is, hmm. I might be ready for this. The external is, how do I get a hold of this guy? <laughs> so, 
So, Cody, where would you send people that want to know more about what you're doing and who you are? Well, um, you know, I've got, you know, CodyBateman.com forward slash podcasts. I've got a podcast show uh, titled Relationship Marketing with Cody B. Very similar to what you're doing here. And there's, you know, you, you can go to that, uh, CodyBateman.com forward slash podcast, and it has a storage of all the podcasts. And, uh, you know, you might just want to go check that out. And it's just me, it's basically just me interviewing other people and bringing out their voice and their message on the concept of relationship marketing and service. So I think that's a great place you know, to start, uh, I've got the power of human connection book and, and, uh, cause again, hey, people, you know, can just, people are going to see this on the podcast. They're going to see it on YouTube. So they can just drop it in the comments or they can go to Cody Bateman.com and contact you, right? There's a place they, to contact you there. Yep, yep. And, uh, hey, I heard you on Richard, the Richard Brooks show. Send me one of your books. <laughs> yep. Yep. And, and of course, you know, Facebook, LinkedIn, all those, you know, Cody Bateman on LinkedIn and, so, uh, but yeah, I'd be any way that I can serve and help, I'd love to be able to do. Um, we have a deal where our affiliates can send a copy of that book for two cents. And we did this fun little thing where I was like, you know, give your two cents on relationship marketing. So we charge, we charge them two pennies and then they pay the shipping too, but they can send that, that book out to anybody. And so... I can certainly do the same offer here, but you don't even need to pay two cents. You can have it for free. And, but my only, my only uh, ask in that is if I give you a copy of this book, you darn well better read it. <laughs> okay. Yeah, for don't sure. make me send it to you now you not read it. So Yeah. How about you read it and then give it to someone else? Yeah. Pay it forward. Yeah, exactly. Cody, thank you so much for your uh, generous time, your heart, your wisdom, your mission. You are good, good, good for the world. Thank you, Richard. I really appreciate that. I learned from the best. And, uh, you know, I just can't tell you how much of a positive influence you have been on, on my life over the years. You talk about those voices. I remember you speaking at one of my events, um, and at the time it was kind of unusual because you were the CEO of your own network marketing company, and you came and spoke at one of my events. Um, but you really spoke to me that day, like you, that Les Brown talk about how sometimes you're you're the voice. You really spoke to me that day. I can't even tell you what you said. All I can tell you is that. You just really, really inspired me that day to be a better person. And, and that's, that's what you've been ever since. So I appreciate what you're doing out there. Thank you, brother. Hey, everybody. Thanks for joining us for another remarkable interview on The Richard Brooks Show. And if this inspired you, if you feel good about it, if you have a prompting, share it with your team and share it with the world. We'll see you on the next one. Thanks, everybody.